Mate, I want to have a conversation with you today. Um, very off script, brother to brother, brother to sister, from another mother. I'm just, I want you to leave this video feeling like fucking gassed, mate. You have no idea how good your life can be. And it might suck right now, but I want this video to serve a specific purpose of every time you lose track or every time you lose like uh, that edge and you want to just go and sit and watch Game of Thrones for seven hours and eat fucking Cheetos, I'm going to come back to this video and revisit it because I'm going to shout at you for basically 20 minutes and tell you to do the work. But I'm also going to give you my experiences and this is going to be a messy video. There's no script, there's no structure to it. Um, but it's underpinned by a single message, which is face the pain. I want to, I want you to get angry with me for a second here, right? Because I know why you started your business, okay? I know why you want the business. It's because you're very unhappy with where you are right now. I'm going to say something controversial. You know how in society at the moment, everyone's like, oh, you should love yourself. Oh, love yourself, be yourself, stick to your roots, like love who you are, find yourself. Fuck that, man. Why would you love the person that's created the reality that you currently hate? Hmm? If you're not happy with your current situation in life and your current circumstance, I'm sorry to break it to you, mate, but everything is your fault. <laughs> Where you are right now, you're doing. Yes, horrible things happen. Traumatic events happen that are outside of your control. But let's be honest, 99.9% .9 of everything in your life is your fault. You did that. So why would you love yourself? Why don't you hate yourself? Everyone is so, we're all so fucking weak and fickle these days. Oh, you have to, oh, just love yourself. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine in the end. Everything happens for a reason. Bollocks. Everything happens for a reason because cause and effect governs the universe. <laughs> Everyone thinks everything happens for a reason because of some fucking weird woo-wah thing. Like they're justifying their shitty present situation in the hopes that it will result in a better future. It's coping. It's delusion. So let's start with that phrase, right? Love yourself. If you're not happy with your life, why would you, why would you love that? Why would you love yourself? Because we know, you know, deep down, you know that you are personally responsible for all the suffering in your life to the degree even where if something really bad happens to you, you still get to determine how you feel. Between stimulus and response, man has the freedom to choose. Victory Frankl. He's a Holocaust victim. The dude left the Holocaust relatively emotionally and mentally unscathed. Or James Stockdale, um, prisoner of war. In Vietnam in like the 1960s, the dude was like tortured and like fucking like ruined basically for you know the best part of like a years and the dude came out of that and he was like yeah it's fucked but i'm responsible for how i respond to it or louis zamperini in the film and the book unbroken was lost at sea he was a he was a fighter pilot in world war ii and got lost at sea for um the best part of like 40 days i think it was gets picked up by a japanese warship taken prisoner of war for years on end tortured maliciously beaten comes out of it Obviously he's not fine, but there's videos of him in his old age, like running and being happy. And he's even forgiven the person who tortured him, right? So when you look at your life and you tell me, oh, like I'm not happy with where I am. And oh, it's fine because I love myself. And I, I'm, I'm here because like my dad was mean to me when I was younger. No, not fucking having it. Now I come from a position of luxury to a degree where I haven't faced huge amounts of trauma in my life. So maybe it's easy for me to say this, and maybe you feel a bit angry towards me for this, but I'm telling you there are case studies and examples of people, men and women out there, who have suffered unbelievable things. Not you and I can't even comprehend, can't even begin to understand. And they've come out of those things and they've documented their journey through them. And at the time they said it was awful, but in the future it shaped who they were. I was bullied when I was 12 years old. I was 11, 12 years old in school. And I was an easy target and I was basically bullied for near enough like two years. Every day I'd go to school feeling sick, I wouldn't want to eat breakfast. And um, for, for probably about seven years after that, I became addicted to video gaming. And I blamed my addiction on um, the bullies. I was like, oh, I'm just, I just play video games just so I can escape. Like, it's, oh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's not my fault, like I was bullied. Fucking bollocks, mate, it's my fault. I was dealt a bad hand in that circumstance, especially at that age, because you don't know how to deal with shit at that age. But when you're an adult and you've been through trauma as a child, you have a psychological uh, and, in my opinion, spiritual responsibility to process that and learn from it and grow from it. And do you know what, man? Like, I haven't been tested all that much. You know, I know people who have lost family members. I know people who have lost all sorts of stuff. I know people who have suffered immeasurably, who have become disabled and still been able to get on with life and get like build a good career and take care of their health and yes like psychologically they're probably still fucked 
and you see that in people, but they don't let it hold them back. They don't turn to drugs or alcohol, and they don't they don't wallow in self pity. They say something bad has happened to me, and I'm going to get on with it. And I admire nothing more than that. Right, I'm going to give you a quote from Charlie Munger here, and I want you to pay attention because this is a really important quote. To get what you want, you must deserve what you want. The world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. This is how you have to look at goal setting. So when you write down your little goal in your journal, and you say, "This is what I want," you are basically saying to the universe, "Hey, mate." I'm requesting this from you. Now you have to understand that success is transactional by nature. And what that means is that if you want to get, you have to give. The, the, the fundamental first principle of altruism underpins all human endeavor and achievement. And so when you go to the universe and you say, hey mate, like, I want 10 grand a month. I want a, a great body and I want to be 90 kg and 10% body fat, or I want to be a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I don't care what it is. Something that requires more of you than you currently have right now. When you set a goal, you're making a request and you have to buy it. And the currency you will use to make this purchase is pain. Oh, that's an interesting thought. So let's go back to this quote. How do we deserve success? Like where you are right now in life, you deserve to be there. Now, this obviously caveats with the fact that if something traumatic's happened to you, nobody deserves to lose a loved one. Nobody deserves to be disabled. Nobody deserves to be taken prisoner of war, right? But generally speaking, for most of your life, the situation you're in, you're the current state of your health, the current state of your family affairs, the current state of your friendships, the current state of your wealth is your fault. So that thing that you blame as to why you're not successful, you have to stop blaming it, man. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Like, oh, I can't be successful because I've got an Indian accent and people won't want to buy from me. Or oh, I won't be successful because like, my dad was mean to me when I was a kid. Or I can't be successful because I haven't got this person in my life. The more you blame, the less you gain. All right, so simple. How do we deserve success? Pain. So you have to imagine that pain is like a currency. And so what you're doing when you set a goal is we have transactional latency is what I would call this, where Right now, in my current state, I'm setting a goal. So for me, right now, my goal is a nine-figure income, 100 million a year. So I have requested that from the universe. And I said, Mr. Universe, Mr. Worldwide, Pitbull, whatever the hell your name is, please. In order to get that, I have to give something. But what do I give? Right, but I give pain. So what the universe is going to do for the next X amount of years is it's going to watch me every day. And the universe is going to make its decision on to give whether or not I should have that thing on one thing. How much pain have I put myself through? What is pain, right? How does pain manifest? Pain manifests when resistance meets effort. So as a human being, the only thing you can really do is produce effort. And resistance basically happens when you do something or you think about doing something that you don't want to do. I'm gonna give you the easiest example to understand resistance. Right now, pause this video, pick up the phone and make 10 cold calls. Now you feel resistance, feel it? Do you feel the excuses? So resistance can be this feeling of like, oh God, I don't wanna do that. Or resistance can be the, oh, like it's just a YouTube video, like I'll do it tomorrow. Or resistance can be the, like any, any sort of excuse that you just came up with is resistance. So do it with me. I'm gonna make a cold call right now. Right? I have no intention to book an appointment. The purpose of this exercise is just to face some pain. But like, I'm just gonna Google a random number and face some pain. Because even me, like I've made thousands of cold calls and like, I'm like, oh, a cold call, right? So let's just do it, yeah? And let's see what happens to me after I face some pain, right? You know, now I'm feeling a bit like, oh, a bit pumped, like a bit nervous, do you know what I mean? You don't wanna do it. You're facing some resistance. This is pain. I'm currently in pain right now, right? Hi, Mark speaking. Hi there, Mark, is this marketing? Oh, awesome. Hi, Mark. Um, I've got to be honest with you, mate. I'm a salesperson with a product trying to sell something. Um, I don't really want to yeah. pitch you without your permission, though. Can I do it here, or would you rather I email you? Um, if you wouldn't mind emailing, I'm actually right in the middle of a meeting, actually. So, uh, yeah, fine, you send me an email. Sure. That would be, um, that would be perfect. Not a problem, actually. But before I do, I just want to make sure, obviously, it's going to be worth your time. Um, it's to do with client acquisition um, and helping you okay. book more appointments. Is that something that... You, You'd be interested in? Is that a problem for you right now, or in, do you... in all honesty, we're we're swamped right now. Okay, cool. So at this moment in time, we're yeah, we're, we're struggling to cope with the amount of work we've got. Happy to hear it, man. Have a good day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I haven't made a cold call in a quite a long time, to be honest with you. But the point there, like that, I, I flopped there. That was a flop. Right? I didn't try and handle his objection. I even asked to email him, but, but that's pain. That's resistance, right? <laughs> you, know, you, you start doing stupid shit in the face of pain. And in the spirit of transparency, I want you to see stuff like that because I'm not perfect and I don't want, I want you to be able to relate to me, if that makes sense. But that's my point. It's like, it's not about making the perfect cold call or having the perfect technique in this instance. It's not about like booking the appointment or handling the objection. It's just about having effort meet resistance. Because now as a result of doing that, I deserve to be successful just ever so slightly more. I don't deserve success because of that one call, but maybe like 0.0000001% more, just a tiny, tiny bit. And what you'll find is that all, all success is, is it's the transaction. You, you set the goal, you make the request to the universe. The universe then will watch you day in, day out, and it doesn't sleep. So it watches you all the time. It notices the shit you do at five in the morning. It notices the shit you do at 6 p.m. at night. It notices every thought, every action, every decision, everything you've ever done, the universe is watching. And this is why, if you've not started a business before and you say you wanna to get to 10K a month in three months, it's very hard to build enough pain in three months to deserve to be successful. So you have to imagine this, like what you're doing when you when you set a goal, we know, we talked about the request thing. You set the goal and obviously as humans, you, you understand that the goal happens with time. And I don't like setting goals against time frames. I, I, never, I don't believe in time frame based goals. I think they're stupid because who are we to tell the universe over the time frame over which we can achieve it? I set my goals against the amount of pain I need to put in. So instead of being like, oh, I wanna be at 100 million a year in five years, right? What I will do instead is I will say, I want to be at 100 million a year when I deserve to be there, right? Because you hack it then. Because then you have this thing of a goal with a time frame sets either, an op it's either over optimistic because you're gonna think you're gonna achieve it too quickly, then you get disappointed and quit, or you're being pessimistic, all right? Because maybe you can achieve it in way faster than five years. But if you set a time frame, it's like having a deadline for an essay. If you know you've got a week to complete it, you're gonna wait the day before. But if you've only got six days to complete it, you're gonna do it on day five. If you, if you have to complete the essay by tomorrow, you'll do it tonight. And so when you set a time frame based goal, you just, you, you delay the achievement of the goal. When like, as human beings, we do not have the foresight or the wisdom to determine like what the universe determines as deserving, if that makes sense. So it might take me five years to deserve and to build enough pain to get to 100 million a year, it might take me six months, it might take me 10 years, it might take me 25 years, I don't know, I'm not God. So imagine it's like a casino, you go at the end of the, the session, whatever, I've never been to a casino, I, I don't think anyone wants to to be honest, but you go to a casino and at the end you cash in your chips, you say, here are my chips, give me my cash, right? And this is what you're doing with your goal and success. So you set the goal, you go and do the painful stuff, and in a year's time, maybe the universe comes back to you and says, all right, let's see how many chips you've got. And then you present the amount of pain you've put yourself through. And the universe is like, oh, do you know what? You don't quite deserve 10K a month, but I'll give you six because you tried. But you know, like you, you're, you're still playing League of Legends. You still can't go to bed on time. Every time you make a cold call, like you, you end up giving like a two minute break in between each one. You don't really deserve 10K a month, but I'll give you half of it because you're halfway there. This model was, it served me incredibly well. From a mindset perspective, I love it. And it's super helpful. And so let's talk a bit about this thing. So we create pain. And what you're doing every time effort meets resistance, so every time your human will powers through a painful activity, you, you become ever so slightly heavier in terms of your deserving, right? So imagine that your deserving factor, imagine it's like it has a weight to it. And so imagine you've got like this scale, right? And on this side, you've got deserving it. And on this side, you've got not deserving it, right? And so every time you do something that helps you deserve success, the scale tips a little bit, right? And then you do 10 more things that help you deserve success and it tips a little bit more. And you do a load more things and it tips more. But then if you do something that means you don't deserve success, then it tips the other way. And so this is why most people plateau, right? Because their deserving is perfectly balanced with their undeserving. And so they do, they do a week of work that helps them deserve 10K a month. And then the following week is just a disaster and so it levels back out. And so most people operate between this sort of like oscillation essentially where like suddenly they deserve it all and then they, they break it down. And then they deserve it again and they break it down. And then they just stay at this same point. Whereas if you just keep on deserving it and keep on deserving it and keep on deserving it, over time the scales just completely tilt in your favor and then you get what you want. And likewise, if you keep on deserving it and undeserving it, if you keep on like, if you, if you know you're gonna do it, you're supposed to do 100 cold calls, you only do 10 right? Or if you, if you go on like a wild night out and you binge drink, 
or if you if you watch porn when you said you're not going to, right? Every time you do something that means you don't deserve the goal, the, the scale tips in the other favor. And so you've got to imagine that like, you want to be as heavy as you can be in terms of deserving factor. In short, very simple. Every day, wake up and ask yourself, what should I do that helps me deserve success? We define that by asking ourselves, what is going to bring me the most pain? And we define that by saying, what do I feel the most resistance towards doing? And how can I apply effort to doing that? Prime example, cold calling, right? Go and do 10 now. Because you know how it works, man. The scale's here. Right now for you, the scale's probably tipped like this. You probably don't deserve a thing. And you know that because your life fucking sucks. You deserve to be where you currently are. You do. If you're not happy, if you're miserable, if you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're lonely, if you're anxious, right? If you're in a bad place and you, you fucking hate yourself, you deserve to be there. Because where you are right now is the sum of every action and decision you've ever taken ever. Oh, but Charlie, something bad happened to me when I was like 12 years old and that's why I'm not successful. Then fucking they get a therapist and process it. Face the pain. You wanna be happy? Your goal is to be happy? Well, you've set a request for the universe. The universe will now look at you and see how much pain is this person willing to put themselves through to be happy? Are they willing to talk to a therapist about their problems? Are they willing to face that pain? Are they willing to do the work and deserve to be happy? It's a horrible message, but it's a, it's a liberating one. Right now, you're either pissed at me or you either feel a sense of love for me. I don't care how you feel towards me. I truly don't in this current state of mind. Because I'm here to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to. Because society tells you what you want to hear. They will tell you it's not your fault. They will tell you that you should love yourself. They will tell you that it's all going to be okay in the end. And they will tell you all these things. No, you deserve your life. Where you are right now is the result of everything you've ever done. And so for me right now, I'm sat in an Airbnb that costs $1,000 a night in the most, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, right on the lake, I feel amazing, I've got a healthy body, I've got great relationships, my family's in place, I've got good friendships, I'm not lonely, I'm not sad, I'm not unhappy, I'm not miserable, I'm not I deserve this because I have built it. I've spent the last seven years in pure agony and suffering. I deserve to make a million dollars a month, right? It's impossible to achieve success without deserving it. Yes, you can caveat this. Oh, but if you're born into a rich family and you don't deserve the wealth and you're still wealthy. Yes, all right. Have you been born into a wealthy family? Maybe, lucky for you. Maybe you have been and you hate it because you feel like you want to build your own thing. If you live in the West, there's no fucking excuse. You know, if, you've, if, if right now you're watching this and you are, you're living in like rural Africa, you've got 0.2 megabyte per second internet, you, your family, you've got family with diseases, you haven't got clean drinking water, you haven't got access to education and books, then maybe it's not your fault. But still, you can take responsibility for that and try. But my point is, is that you watching this are probably not in that state, right? If you are in a war-torn country and your, your village is being bombed every day and you've just lost your parents and you've got to take care of your, your siblings and, you know, your grandmother's also sick and you know, you've also got this and you can't eat, then maybe you don't deserve that. My point here is that you're not going through that shit. <laughs> you're not, man. Like, your life isn't like, you know, the thing that baffles me is like, a hundred years ago, men of my age had to go to fucking war. We had to sit in filthy, muddy, freezing trenches and kill other men without any justification. That's not happening to people these days. <laughs> we don't have to hold fucking bayonets and stab people and lose our guts on the battlefield and, and die a slow, painful death whilst we're crying out for our mum. We don't have to go through that. So don't tell me that you love yourself when you're in a shit situation. If you're a soldier and you've been to war and you've got post-traumatic stress disorder and you spent five years in service and you've seen some shit and you've turned to alcohol, then maybe it's not your fault, right? I'm not saying that everything is always everyone's fault ever, but for the most, most of you watching this, for the average person, your life has been built to spec. You designed it, you did it, it's your fault. It's not anything else, it's nothing else to blame except from you. It's not an easy message to digest, but make 10 cold calls right now. Oh, but I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, it's late, they won't answer. Oh, um, oh, I, uh, I just, I, I wanna build the confidence first. Oh, I can't do cold calls because I don't know what, I haven't got a service to sell. It doesn't matter. The point is that you're facing pain, you're facing resistance, right? Just do, get on the floor and hold a plank for a minute. Oh, that's stupid, I'm not gonna do that because, you know, like, 
I, I don't need to do the plank. Like I already, I already worked out today. Or I don't want to, I don't want to burn my body out. Or oh yeah, I'm already sore from yesterday. Just fucking, just dude. Like right, don't. If you haven't got the point yet, <laughs> you need to get it. Go and do something that hurts right now. Make ten cold calls. Make ten cold calls whilst you're doing a plank. I don't know. Go and take a cold shower. Oh, but I already showered today. Just you'll notice that as soon as, like as soon as resistance manifests, you have an, you have the opportunity to weigh yourself down in the deserving factor. That's how you have to look at it. Every time you don't want to do something, every time something feels painful or you don't want to do it, you judge your deserving success ever so slightly more. And if you do that, mark my words, if this is your main mode of behavior and the way that you look at the world and this is the paradigm that you develop, you do this for two, three years, you'll have everything you want and more. I mean that. I could be at 100 million a year now if I wasn't such a little weak boy. You know, there's shit that I've done over the last seven years. There's weeks of work that I've had off. There's times where I've just spent the whole day watch, watching Game of Thrones. There's junk food that I've eaten. There's stupid porn that I've watched. There's, I'm not perfect, right? And I haven't been over the last seven years, but I've had it in check where I've done stupid shit that it means I'm undeserving, but the pain factor is way outweighing the undeserving thing. But not to the, not, it's not outweighing it enough for me to deserve a hundred million a year. Where, where you are right now is you're doing. You deserve your current life, right? You don't deserve to have traumatic bad things happen to you. Nobody deserves to, you know, have unnecessary amounts of suffering, but your mental health, your physical health, the status of your financial situation, the relationships you have with people, um, everything that is in your control is your fault. I'm sorry to admit it to you, but it is. And the sooner you can accept that, the better. The best thing to do, if you want to really outweigh this deserving thing, if you really want to deserve it as much as you can, is every time you're doing something painful and every time you're facing resistance, double up, right? I'm give you an example. If you, t if you set the goal of 100 cold calls, and you get to 90 and you start feeling like, oh, I'm nearly done. Like, oh, I just don't want to, oh, the last 10. Like, as soon as your brain creates resistance, you want to double the effort. Let me show you something. So two years ago, um, I used to run um, like five kilometers. This is in, this was May the 16th, May 16, 2021 at 5.37 p.m., right? I'm gonna show you something in a second. Um, I used to run 5K, right? And one day I was running 5K and I got to kilometer four and you know when you're running in your body, like towards the end, you're like, oh, I'm nearly done. Like, oh, I can't wait to be done. Ah, the resistance starts kicking in. Like your body's like, you know, it's got a kilometer left. So it just starts kicking up a fuss. What I did on the 21st of May, 2021, at 5.37 p.m. in South Somerset, United Kingdom, changed my life. I got to kilometer four and I told myself that because I was feeling this resistance and pain, I said to myself, we're gonna do another five kilometers. I made my brain my bitch. And guess what? When I got to the end of that five kilometers, the same thing happened. And I said, we're gonna do another 10. And it's not, I thought I was fucking crazy. I was like, we're gonna do another 10. And then when it got to the end of that 10, kilometer nine, I was like, as you can imagine, like I'd never run anything more than 5K in my life. I was like fucking wiped out. Got to the end, near enough the end, my body was like, I'm done, like stop this now. Another 10. This is what this looks like. So this is a 30 kilometer run. You see here where it's like a little loop, right? That was supposed to be the 5K. And so, Nowadays, that's how, that's if you really want to like amplify your deserving factor. When you're in pain, double up on what you're feeling, right? So, you know, I'm going, in the, I'm I'm doing cold plunges every day. This this morning, doing cold, I'm sauna to cold plunge, and I'm in the cold plunge, and then I'm there like two minutes in, I'm like shaking, and like, I want to get out. And I'm like, as soon as my brain produces that like fear and that resistance, I just double it. Now, the reason I didn't go beyond 30 kilometers is because I actually was like at the point where I was like near enough vomiting. Like my, I, was, I felt faint and I was like, all right, and that's probably enough. Like I've proven my point. I can make my body my bitch and take it to its limit. And so the same thing is true. Dude, if you're in a sauna and then you're like, you get to 15 minutes, and you're like, I want to get out and then you double it up to half an hour and then you do it again. Don't, don't stay in a sauna for 60 minutes. It's probably not healthy. But you see the point. If you're cold calling or if you're sending cold emails or if you're doing some work, or if there's something that you're doing right now that is that you're feeling resistance towards doing, you, your, your brain's being a little bitch about it, and then just double up. It's the fastest way to deserve more, because then it's, it creates even more pain. And this is what I used to do with cold calling. <laughs> like, I I do like I do like 100 dials, get to like dial 85, dial 90, be like, oh, thank God, it's almost over. And as soon as I caught bitch brain coming into action, like bitch Charlie, I'd be like, oh, why don't we do 200, bitch? And what that does is, it conditions your brain to no longer be fearful or face or create resistance. So now when I'm doing something painful, I just do it. I don't have any problem like with too much resistance because my brain now knows that if it creates resistance, it's gonna have to do double the pain. 
So you can hack your brain in this way. Like I've conditioned my mind and I basically, I've got to deal with my brain. Like mate, if you, if you create resistance, you're going to have to essentially do double of whatever you're creating resistance towards. And so now when I have to do something painful, my brain's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to fuck with him. I'm just going to let him do what he wants to do. Because I know that if I start kicking up a fuss at kilometer 10, I might have to do 40 kilometers and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to stay quiet. Right. And that's how you can eventually build, in my opinion, resilience, right? That's what I think strength is, is like when your brain's just not a bitch anymore or when it's still a bitch, but you ignore it, right? That's a roundabout way of saying just face the pain and do the things that hurt. Because dude, like uh, you've got one life, man, woman, Apache helicopter. I don't know what you identify as, right? You've got one life, you've got one chance on this spinning rock to actually do something meaningful. And the, the only way to do that is to face pain. And if you don't do that, then like, like I genuinely, as a rule of thumb, do not respect anyone that can do this because I don't want people like that in my life. If you need help getting more clients, there's a link in the description you can click. It's a video of me trying to sell you something. I don't care if you click it or not, but if you're struggling to get clients and you want them, just check that out. If you've been watching for some time, haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. If you're watching for the first time, subscribe. It helps me, it makes me happy, come on. If you like the video, like the video and comment anything below. I don't care, I'm gonna get comments of people being like, oh, well, this is my life and like, I don't deserve to be here. It's victims, mate, fucking victims. They drive me insane. People who think that they are um, entitled to a good life without deserving it, fucking victims, mate. Have a good day, I love you.